Today we're going to look at automated cyber risk monitoring um, and explore a little of the art of the possible with the ServiceNow platform. If you look at the ServiceNow ecosystem, um, it's a very rich ecosystem. ServiceNow started off as primarily a service management tool. So in the cloud there you'll see you've got your service management data. You've got your asset register, your CMDB, business processes, digital workflows. Of course, you can also use ServiceNow for managing risk data, controls and compliance. Huge amount of automation and of course, something called orchestration where you actually initiate action and activities and tasks from the engine. Got a very rich reporting and analytics engine. Um, very refined user experience and of course you can link to all of your security operations tools whether it's your CM systems, detection tools, vulnerability scanners, threat intelligence feeds and of course we can bring in risk data, control data from SAP, we can bring in transactional data from other heritage systems of record you have across the organization. And finally, which is the pertinent piece that we're going to explore quickly, the capability to discover your physical IT estate. And when I say physical, I mean not just devices that you have within your perimeter, but actually this capability of bringing in your cloud estate as well. And how that estate, when it comes into the engine, um, can be used to stand up and manage your risk and compliance posture. If I simplify this diagram a little, then now what we're going to look at here is the discovery feed into ServiceNow and how that data is ingested by the engine and is used to manage risks and controls and evidence your posture. So we've got a sequence of events that's going to happen here that looks from discovery, asset, controls. We're going to look specifically at vulnerability related control and how the management of those controls is used to measure your risk posture in close to real time. What we have here is a small snapshot of a CMDB. In this case, I'm looking at AIX servers. Of course, your CMDB may be um, a very large database, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of configuration items. I've seen CMDBs with up to 20 million configuration items. So we're just homing in on a small manageable subset that we can visualize quickly here. Now, something that ServiceNow Discovery will do is it will go out, look at your estate according to a schedule that you've set, and it will find devices, ask them, what are you? Do I know you? And from that, determine whether it should create a new configuration item on the system or <clears throat> update an existing one it already knows about. So there's a set of reconciliation rules that appear. What it can also do is find relationships from one device to another by exploring what's happening across the device's ports. So let's imagine we brought in a set of discovery related events. So here we got a small set of 11 records and as you can see it's found some devices. It's also found some relationships, dependencies across devices. So this is the data that's been brought in to ServiceNow. What I'm going to do with all of that is I'm going to process that data as discovery would. So there we go. We've transformed the data into the database. And now if I look at my servers, we'll see we've got another two added to the list. Let's take a look at one of them. We found a new AAX server. Discovery has already queried it to find out as much information as it can about it. And what you often find with 
devices, Windows servers, AIX servers, whatever. They've got their own local system of record somewhere that the technology team manages in terms of where the golden source of this data is. And what we're seeing here is, if you like, a federated view, a trusted source of federated truth. So we've pulled in the data from that configuration item as much as we can. As you can see, we've been able to create an asset record from it. So rules have kicked in to determine when an asset is or is not created. So if it's something physical that you can put a tag on, yes, that sounds like a good candidate for an asset. We found other information, IP addresses, so on and so forth. And through the relationship information that's found, we've already got a, an understanding of where this device sits in your IT estate, the, how it relates to other components. And if I look at a more graphical view of this, so straight away from that qu quick discovery, I've pulled in a server, I've built relationships in the CMDB, and you can see that this particular server is part of some critical business services, so SAP materials management, controlling, plant maintenance. If I go back to that first line, you can see that this, this server that we brought in through discovery is linked to other servers where you can see that there's incidents related to them, maybe problems related to them, there may be open change requests related to them. So I'm already getting a very rich picture of where this new device fits into the overall scheme of things. So one field that's empty, last vulnerability scan. So this is where you would have your vulnerability scanners looking at the estate. And from this record, you can see, OK, no vulnerability scan has happened yet. So that's the asset and configuration side. What does this mean from a risk and control side? Well, let's take a look at that. What I'm going to open here is a compliance indicator. So it's looking at vulnerability scanning. There is the configuration item that it relates to. The actual scanning is done automatically by the system to a schedule. You can do a scan manually, but of course, automation is key to managing uh, a larger state here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this indicator. So now the indicator is going to run. It's going to take a look at what's going on and come back with its findings. Let's refresh that. So you can see the indicator is in a failed state. If I look at the control, we've got a non compliant control now. What does that mean to risk? Let's open the control. So here's the particular control. If I look at the risks, here we go. It's related to one particular risk. Now in reality, risks and controls have a many to many relationships or so particular control can be used to treat multiple risks. Similarly, a single risk will have multiple controls that treats it. So here's a risk. Now, if I look at the scoring, I can see calculated score is high. There's, there's a lot of fields here on the scoring. So you have inherent scoring that you'll have put into the GRC tool, or IRM as we call it. Um, you've got your residual scoring. What ServiceNow is doing, what the engines are doing, is it's working out a near real-time score, the calculated score based on your key risk indicators, compliance indicators, control compliance data. So in this case, 
a non-compliant control is raising the risk level. So we've got a high level of risk. As you can see, the, the main measurement is qualitative. Here. There's quantitative figures behind that, and you can configure that within the IRM engine, but I've just shown them for completeness. So we've got a calculated score of high here. So how do we deal with that? How do we bring that risk level down? Well, remember, going back to that indicator that it failed, the reason it had failed was because the configuration item it related to hadn't been vulnerability scanned yet. So we had no measurement. So let's put in a date to say, well, actually, this device has been scanned. It was scanned within the last seven days. So your vulnerability feeds would be doing this. And remember, all the different modules of service now can talk to each other. And now what I'm going to do, having set a vulnerability scan date, which will have happened automatically, I'll rerun the indicator. So th this will take a little bit of time, a few seconds normally. This is one record. Of course, in, a, in an automated indicator run, you can have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of indicators running, all doing various checks. And now you can see that the indicator has passed. If I look at the control, status has gone from red to green. We've now got a compliant indicator. If I look at the associated risk that that indicator that that control is used to treat, you can see that the calculated score of the risk has gone down to very low. So what's happened is this cycle. Discovery has found some devices. It creates the components, the asset records, the configuration item records in the database, maps them to your services. We've got controls instantiated. We've got risks that are being measured from those. Then you can start managing the controls, and we managed it in that case just by setting the vulnerability scan data. Say yes, we've we've done the needful. Of course, you don't. You can take other approaches. You can say, well, actually, I'm not going to worry about that vulnerability. Um, we're going to take another approach. So you may put through a policy exception against it. Of course, the the RM engines have those facilities for managing in a different way. But in this case, we managed the control and then the risk level fell to within with the tolerance level. It came back as low. And then you, you go around this continuous loop uh, where discovery does its regular feeds, maintaining a close to real time view of your estate. Uh, and the great thing about this, that was all light touch. That would all happen with no human intervention whatsoever. You're managing your estate, you're creating the necessary risks and controls, the transactional activities to manage the controls are updating the database, that's updating compliance status, that's updating your risk profile. It's all light touch, if not zero touch. So we're using the full power of the engine to manage our estate and manage our risk and compliance posture. It all works. So I hope you found that very useful. Thank you for listening.